Nobody cares about racial stuff anymore. We might care about terrorism or gangs or, or, or following the rule of law, but it's not about race at all. And it's just, never mind, it's about race. I don't care. You, if you're not a terrorist, I don't care. You're not a gang member, I don't care. You're not on welfare, I don't care. You are brown and I am uncomfortable. Uh, so now, well, what did we just spend the last five years talking about if the whole time we were right to feel like this feels like it's about race? And they said, no, you're playing the race card. Well, now at least we can have the honest conversation. Uh, it is. It's about race. It's about race. It's about, it's about, it's race. about race and how people view this, this country. She views it as a, presumably a majority white country. And if, she's un, if Laura Ingram is unhappy now, she's going to be miserable in the next generation because thanks to you know, mixed, mixed race marriages and immigration, Asian Americans, all, all sorts of people in this country, we are changing, like it or not. The, the country is changing. It doesn't make us less American. It just makes us more diverse. That's what she does not like. The census is now Laura Ingram's mortal enemy. <laughs> right. uh, Dante, um, a quote that sticks out here, and it's fitting for all of these topics. Um, it came from the Wall Street Journal, who did some reporting on the sworn deposition that Cowboys owner Jerry Jones gave. And he says that Trump told him when it comes to the NFL protest this, quote, this is a very winning, strong issue for me. Tell everybody, you can't win this one. This one lifts me. If that's the position of the president, what do you do with it? I think you just got to keep fighting. And there's always been adversity towards those with progressive values, towards those who have fought against injustice, not just in this country, but around the world. Uh, Martin Luther King fought day in and day out uh, against inequalities, against racial inequalities, against uh, uh, militarism, against uh, poor people. He fought for the Poor People's Campaign, and he was assassinated. Uh, same thing with a number of other fellows uh, around the world. And it's not unfortunately it's something that's not going to go away so you have to keep fighting and, and i think that one of the best things that the players have talked about is that they've tried their best to ignore the president and continue to go mm -hmm. to the city to their local city halls continue to meet with uh governors and attorneys generals continue to donate uh hundreds of thousands and even in uh in Calvin kaepernick's case millions of dollars um the players have been at the forefront of criminal justice reform not the president and if the president really was serious about criminal justice reform, he'd see these guys as allies and not as enemies. But of course, as we've all noted, and Van Jones just said, it's about race, and he tries to downplay that it's not about race, but we all know it is. I'll tell you, and I know there are many more players that are like this, as you're noting, Dante, but Malcolm Jenkins is a perfect example of this, putting his money and his time where his mouth is and giving his time to his community in, in trying to bring about the change that he is protesting and speaking out about. Um, they are allies and should be allies to the president is a perfect way to say it, Dante. Great to see you, Dante. Thank you so much. Raul, Van, thank, thank you, thank you. you, thank you, thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. And be sure, please, to catch Van Jones' show this weekend, Saturday night, 7 o'clock Eastern. Van is sitting down with SNL star and someone who's never short of opinions, who has a lot to say, Leslie Jones. It's a show of Joneses. Yes. <laughs> Joneses. Joneses that I will never be able to keep up with. And also, he's talking to voters in Georgia about that state's high stakes. Uh, governor's race. That's tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Eastern, only on CNN. I really appreciate it. Coming up for us, why is the woman known as the Manhattan Madam testifying in front of Robert Mueller's grand jury? What does she know about Russian election interference? That's next.